We all want to live in a better world, right? To see real change with equality for all. We've made progress, but change needs to happen fast enough. We are leaving behind too many women and girls. We are leaving behind too many child brides. The joint general comment um, is a, an articulation which was provided by the African Commission on Human and People's Rights and the Committee of Experts. And they really defined critical interpretation around child marriage and which our member states have to follow. First, in the joint general comment, and which I fully, fully support, is that the age of marriage without exception is 18. The general comment, therefore, has a very wide scope. It includes not only girls who are involved, already involved in child marriage, but those who are at risk of child marriage, and even adults, women who are today adults but who were married at the age of below 18. We know, and as has been published, including by the UN and by the African Union, that we have the highest prevalence of child marriage in Africa, where more than 12 million girls are married each year globally, and the highest numbers are in Africa. In West Africa, we have countries like Niger, like Burkina Faso, where over 65% of girls are married under the age of 18. Here in Southern Africa, we have countries like Malawi, where 42% are married under the age of 18. Here in my country, in Zimbabwe, it's over 30%. In um, 2014, um, the African Union launched a campaign to um, and child marriages on the African continent. And in the same year, in July of the same year, the African Commission on Human and People's Rights um, then um, passed Resolution 292, which was a resolution commission um, mandating the Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Women in Africa to commission a 10-country study to assess the prevalence of child marriages on the African continent, as well as to assess um, the legislative provisions that were in place in different countries to protect um, the rights of children from um, child marriages. Um, in that resolution, the African Commission uh, mandated the Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Women in Africa uh, to work with the Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of the Child in developing uh, this general comment, and also to work with the Center for Human Rights at the University of Pretoria, uh, providing technical support in the uh, research work. When it comes to women's rights organizations, it's such a powerful tool because they can use it for advocacy, to teach other human rights-based organizations, to teach even their national governments on what it entails and why there is a, a need to ensure that the Maputo Protocol is domesticated for those who have ratified and for ratification for the countries which are yet to ratify. Africa has some of the most progressive policies for ending early child and forced marriages such as the Maputo Protocol and the African Children's Charter. We really, really expect that these African human rights systems is able to operate without any interference so that the rights of women can be progressive in our countries. The rights of the girl child are also, you know, upheld so that women and girls can, can participate in the social structure of their countries without any uh, hindrances. Now that we have the joint general comment on ending child marriages, I think it is important for the African Commission as well to work hand in glove with the uh, committee uh, to ensure that state parties to both the African um, Children's Charter and the Maputo Protocol uh, start the important work of harmonizing their laws to ensure that uh, marriages uh, take place um, with adults above the age of 18. When I was 12 years old, my mother was My mother was Thank 
Being deliberate, grounded and guided by collective action is the only way to deliver for women and girls affected by violations such as early child and forced marriages. My destiny is bright. I choose to get out of the dark. I will defend my right from now onwards. It's a new dawn for children. Arise and shine.